Let's dig into this with Tom Grundy. He's editor-in-chief and founder of Hong Kong Free Press. That's an independent publication there. And he joins us now on Skype from Hong Kong. Tom, I know you've been covering all of this very, very closely indeed. Let's start with TikTok, though. Uh, what kind of reaction have you been seeing there, especially as I believe the, the mainland version that Sarah was referring to, Duyin, will still work? Well, TikTok, um, many people already believe that it's somehow under Beijing's control. India has banned it already uh, amid border clashes with Beijing. And like Huawei, there's a lot of geopolitics behind this, of course, with uh, uh, the US's Pompeo saying that they may also seek to restrict access to the app. It was briefly, um, they briefly suspended a, a Uyghur activist on the platform um, a year or so ago. And of course, back in the spotlight today, but Although this looks like a tough measure um, withdrawing from Hong Kong, it's in a bit of a tough position because if it stayed, it would have to comply with this law or face a, a 13,000 US dollar charge or up to six months in prison, or it can pull out completely. Now, ByteDance also own uh, Douyin, which is the Chinese equivalent. That's not being pulled um, from the Hong Kong App Store. That might suggest some disingenuity, I suppose. Mm. Um, but it's unclear whether this is truly a you know a big measure um, by TikTok or ByteDance, or, or whether they are concerned about breaking Chinese law because they've all always said that they will um, protect user data, whether mm. that's in China um, or Hong Kong. Well, as you say, Tom, TikTok is really important in India. I believe India is actually its largest market. They've been very keen to distance themselves from being related to China. So this could be all very strategic. Does that mean then that other social media companies might not follow suit, might not take such drastic action? Yeah, well, there's, there's only about 150,000 users or so in Hong Kong of TikTok. Um, uh, Hong Kongers tend to avoid mainland apps like uh, COVID-19, if you will, and they've been flocking to Signal and other secure apps. But mm -hmm. uh, we've heard Twitter, Facebook, Google, and our team just heard that Zoom and LinkedIn um, will not be complying with um, data requests from the Hong Kong government. Uh, the concern is that this is a vaguely worded law that's going to be broadly applied in the same way that is in, is in China, you know, to, to possibly stifle for dissent. And when you look at the stipulations for terrorism, of which many, many countries have uh, these kinds of laws, it, 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 it states that if you are caught, you know, vandalizing a bus stop even or public mm. facilities, if you're doing so with the, with the notion of, of subverting, subverting Beijing, uh, you could be liable under this security law. And, and that may be one of the things uh, that is concerning international firms now who are having to make a choice between the mainland market and perhaps the controls they may have to face or the uh, free speech ideals that they may be used to in the West. Tom Grundy there, editor-in-chief and founder of Hong Kong Free Press, an independent publication in Hong Kong. Thanks so much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Great to get your thoughts, Tom.